It might come as a surprise to you that many of the celebrities we've come to love weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouths. You, Quaid, are a certain... Some got to where they are today through hard work and their never-say-die attitude. Others have even endured homelessness in their desperate bid for celebrity status. I am 35 years old! From the $50 boost that launched a multi-million dollar career to the music legend that lost it all, here are 15 famous people who used to be homeless. Number 15. Sylvester Stallone. At 30 years old and with just $106 in his bank account, Sylvester Stallone was homeless. Desperately in need of cash, he sold his beloved dog, Buttkiss, for just $50. Yes. Hey, Buttkiss, come here, kid. Come here. Just days prior to selling the rights to Rocky. He wrote the screenplay in three and a half days, shortly after watching the championship match between Muhammad Ali and Chuck Wepner in Richfield, Ohio, on March 24, 1975. Stallone was determined to produce and star in the film he had written, and sold it a week after saying goodbye to his dog for $120,000. He immediately went to buy his dog back, but had to pay $3,000, as the new owner was pretty ruthless. The guy also threatened Stallone with his life, so he handed over his hard-earned cash and left without a word. Both tough on the inside and out, Stallone once said, you get nothing without struggle. An accident at birth left his facial nerve permanently hardened and parts of his lip, tongue, and chin paralyzed. But his inner strength taught him to never give up. He channeled his pain into writing, putting his heart and soul into the script for Rocky. Once sold, many doors opened for Stallone, and he became the legend of the big screen we see today. He is living proof that you shouldn't see accidents as a weakness, but as a strength. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. Sly Stone. In 2009, the former Sly and the Family Stone frontman was forced out of his Los Angeles home and into a van. The famous lead singer for the Funkadelic R&B band lived in a camper van parked in front of a house in Crenshaw for a time. From there, he composed music on a laptop and showered in the home of a retired couple who also fed him. Sly Stone soared to success in the late 1960s and early 1970s. As a talented singer, songwriter, and record producer, and part of one of the most influential bands of that era, life was good. He lived in a 5,432 square foot mansion in Beverly Hills, hosted parties for other music legends, and collected automobiles like we would collect stamps. So what went so wrong? Following their success, Sly and his band reportedly became heavy drug users. The band eventually broke up in 1974, and he began recording solo. Sly slipped into seclusion in the early 1980s, making the occasional brief appearance at high-profile events. He moved into a Napa Valley house he rented with money from a 2007 European tour, but financial problems forced him out and into cheap hotels and then the camper, a life he said he enjoyed because it meant he didn't need to be in one place all the time. The reason behind his financial problems was linked to the suing of his manager, Jerry Goldstein, who he believed swindled him out of money he was rightly owed. Truth be told, he maybe can't accept that his fortune was lost due to substance abuse, mismanagement, and living well beyond his means. Number 13. Halle Berry 
A successful American actress that once worked as a model was the first runner-up in the Miss USA pageant and came in sixth in the Miss World 1986. Halle Berry looks like she has it all. But it wasn't always that way. She, along with many other actresses, particularly those of African-American descent, found it tough to break into the ruthless world of the rich and famous. Thank you for putting me in a piece of god-awful movie. Today, she's one of Hollywood's most successful actresses. But when she first entered show business, things were so tough that she had to live in a homeless shelter in New York City. Rather than let the experience define her, the Oscar winner now says she is grateful for the experience. Barry believes it shaped her into the woman she is today. Having arrived in one of the most expensive cities in the world, New York City, she had some money from a previous modeling gig, but it simply wasn't enough to get by. Just three months later, she ran out of cash and found herself on the street. Her mother told her that if she wanted to be there, she had to work it out for herself. Barry knew giving up was simply not an option. She got herself a job waitressing, and the rest, as they say, is history. Number 12. Chris Pratt a community college dropout, Chris Pratt spent most of 2001 drinking alcohol and smoking weed with his friends. He worked as a discount ticket salesman and daytime stripper, but soon ended up homeless in Maui, Hawaii, sleeping in a van or a tent on the beach. Working enough hours to pay for gas, food, and fishing supplies. What was that at the end of them? Nothing. <laughs> A, bit, a little chunk of lead that we swam out. He wasn't quite sure what he wanted to do with his life, but knew he wanted to be famous and make a lot of money. Although Chris was once quoted to have said that Maui was a pretty awesome place to be homeless, he quickly turned his life around after realizing he had done nothing proactive. Now, he is a $10 million Jurassic World star. So how does someone go from rags to riches in just a few years? Well, fortunately for Chris, he was discovered by actress and director Ray Don Chong while waiting tables at the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company restaurant in Maui. She saw talent in the young waiter, and he made his debut in the short horror film Cursed Part 3. This led to a regular television role in the series Everwood. When it was canceled, he joined the cast of The O.C., and his career took off from there. Now that's what I would call a lucky break, wouldn't you? Number 11, Randy Quaid. He might be the older brother of the two, but he's certainly not wiser. Dennis Quaid's big brother Randy, an actor himself, fled Canada with his wife in 2010 to escape court and felony vandalism charges. In 2015, the 65-year-old star of Kingpin and other popular movies was detained along with his wife Evie while the pair tried to cross from Quebec into Vermont. The arrests added a further twist to a bizarre saga of court cases and claims of Hollywood killers out to get him. Sounds a lot like Hollywood fiction to me, don't you think? The Quades, who had sought asylum in Canada, were accused of doing more than $500,000 worth of damage to a property they once owned in Santa Barbara. They were granted permission to stay in Canada in 2011, with Evie given citizenship because her father was born there. Randy's request for permanent residency was denied in 2013. But this video isn't just gonna say, look, Randy Quaid, he's crazy, ha ha ha, look at him, wow. And he was all set to be deported in 2015 when the pair took matters into their own hands by attempting to cross into Vermont. Identified as fugitives by U.S. Customs officials, Randy and Evie were held in separate correctional facilities after the judge set bail at $500,000 each. Now that's steep. In the end, felony charges were dropped against Randy and Evie pleaded no contest. She was sentenced to three years probation. The pair would really like to make Vermont their permanent home, but the fact that they're not wanted could be a bit of a fly in the ointment. Number 10. Hillary Swank. It's hard to believe that this multi-award winning actress and film producer once called a car home. Walk of fame, Hillary Swank. But she did. 
Hilary Swank, the star of Clint Eastwood's Million Dollar Baby, moved with her mother to Los Angeles as a teenager. For several weeks, they either crashed on air mattresses at a friend's empty home that was for sale, or slept in an old car. The dream was to pursue an acting career, and Swank was determined to succeed. Fortunately, she started landing roles, and the pair found more permanent living arrangements. Swank appreciates the support she received from her mom in those early days, and the two remain close. She says her mother always believed in her, and told her she could do anything she wanted in life as long as she worked hard. When the pair set off for a new life in California, they had just $75 and a mobile car. Things were tough until Swank was signed on as part of the Beverly Hills 90210 cast. This proved to be the turning point. The high school dropout who had grown up in a trailer park in Bellingham, Washington had finally hit it big. Number 9. Tyler Perry American actor, writer, producer, comedian, and director Tyler Perry was listed as the highest paid man in entertainment by Forbes in 2011. He had earned a whopping $130 million between May 2010 and May 2011. What makes this even more exceptional is the fact that in the 90s, Perry was living in Atlanta and homeless on and off for six years. Whilst trying to stage the play that would one day make him his fortune, he had spent every ounce of his savings. If he wasn't living in his car, he was sleeping in a roach-infested hotel full of crackheads. In 1998, his tough life and hard work finally paid off when his musical, I Know I've Been Changed, became a hit. This set Perry on the path to stardom. His career now spans across theater, movies, books, television, and a film studio. He is said to have a net worth of approximately $600 million, a home in a gated community in LA, and vacation properties in both Wyoming and the Bahamas. Not bad for a boy who had a tough upbringing and didn't complete high school. Number 8. Jim Carrey One of the greatest comedic talents alive today, Canadian-born Jim Carrey has spent most of his life living and working in the U.S. So that I can deal with them in the most productive way. He might not be an American citizen, but he's certainly well-loved by his American fans. The irrepressible Carrey has starred in some of the biggest box office hits in recent Hollywood history. But life hasn't always been easy for the megastar. Born to a musician father who worked as an accountant, things were going well for the family until he lost his job. With no steady income, they lost their home and had to live out of a caravan. Carrie left school at just 15 and got himself work as a janitor to help support the family. Today, he says he was angry about the situation at the time, but found solace in comedy. A lucky break in 1979 saw him invited to open for famous comedians Rodney Dangerfield and Buddy Hackett. Although moving to Los Angeles in 1983 was what helped launch his career in entertainment. Regular work in the successful comedy series In Living Color in 1991 led him to star in hit films such as Ace Ventura Pet Detective, The Mask, Liar Liar, The Cable Guy, Bruce Almighty, and Batman Forever. Number 7. Shania Twain Pop star Shania Twain began pursuing a career in singing and songwriting from a young age. She was signed with Mercury Nashville Records in the early 1990s. However, her self-titled debut album saw little success. After collaborating with producer and first husband Mutt Lang, Twain rose to fame with her second album, The Woman in Me, in 1995. 20 million copies of the album were sold worldwide, with Twain quickly becoming a household name. But life wasn't always quite so easy for the Canadian-born singer and songwriter. Born Eileen Twain, she grew up in an abusive household and found herself homeless twice. 
once when she was 14, the next time at 16. Both times, her mother had left the home and taken Twain and her siblings to a homeless shelter in Toronto. She remembers sleeping in crowded quarters on cot-like beds spread out along the walls. The normally guarded Twain spoke about her life in her memoir, From This Moment On, published in 2011. These tough times brought Twain to the stage. She started singing at bars at just eight years old to help pay her family's bills. Although she hated it, it was her deepest passion, and the music helped her survive. Number 6. Jennifer Lopez American actress Jennifer Lopez, also known by her nickname J-Lo, revealed in 2013 that her mantra, Jenny from the Block, isn't too far removed from the truth. She revealed to an American magazine that before her fame and fortune, she was actually homeless for a time. This came about when she fell out with her mother over her decision to pursue a career in dancing. Her mother didn't see a future in dance and wanted J-Lo to go to college, but instead she left home and spent many nights sleeping in her studio. Determined to make it work, she landed a job dancing in Europe just a few months later. On her return, J-Lo booked in living color. She became a fly girl and moved from the Bronx to Los Angeles to start her career. The risk may have paid off, but she found the adjustment difficult. J-Lo hated LA to begin with, but now she loves it. But she says she will always stay loyal to her roots, believing her life in the Bronx gave her all the strength she needed for life. Number 5. Phil McGraw, Dr. Phil. Now one of the highest paid celebrities in the world, Phil McGraw, or Dr. Phil as he is better known, has a net worth of about $450 million. The American television personality, author, and former psychologist holds a doctorate in clinical psychology, but he's not licensed to practice. Letting your inner puppy come out and pee or whatever. <laughs> McGraw first gained celebrity status with appearances on The Oprah Winfrey Show in the late 1990s and went on to create his own TV talk show, Dr. Phil, in 2002. McGraw hasn't always enjoyed the fame and fortune that comes with being a celebrity, though. When he was 12, he went through a homeless phase. His father was studying psychology and money was tight. A lack of cash forced the father-son duo to spend their days in a car, a time that he has mentioned in several books and guest appearances. The pair eventually got a room at the downtown YMCA for $5 a week. Several years later, McGraw joined his father in the same profession, and the pair have collaborated on several projects. Number 4. Daniel Craig it's difficult to believe that the latest actor to portray British Secret Service agent James Bond once slept on a London Park bench. Yeah, you heard that right. The now famous English actor, who appears in films such as Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace, wasn't always quite so fortunate. Until he secured an acting job, Daniel Craig was homeless for a time. His stage career was launched after he completed training at the National Youth Theatre and the Guildhall School of Music and Drama. He made his film debut in the drama The Power of One in 1992, and attracted further attention when he appeared in the historical television war drama Sharp's Eagle in 1993. Several other parts followed. However, international fame was just around the corner in the form of the film series James Bond. Craig took over from Pierce Brosnan, beginning with Casino Royale in 2006. The role earned him a nomination for the BAFTA Award for Best Actor in a Leading Role, and was followed by several sequels, including Skyfall that now ranks as the series' highest grossing film. The 50-year-old actor has graced our screens as James Bond since 2005. Only a certain kind of woman wears a backless dress. So he doesn't have to sleep on park benches now. 
Unless, of course, he wants to. Number three. Steve Harvey. American comedian, businessman, best-selling author, and entertainer, Steve Harvey has it all. Yeah, yeah, I can make them jump, mine just need help. But it hasn't always come easy to the 62-year-old. He's had to work hard to afford the lavish lifestyle he's become accustomed to. The icon's wisecracks and strong work ethic have netted him $160 million. Not bad for a man that had no idea what he wanted to do with his life in the 1980s and actually wound up homeless for a few years. Struggling to pick a path in life after attending West Virginia University, Harvey worked several jobs, but nothing really stuck. He started a career in stand-up comedy, but the paycheck just didn't quite cut the mustard, and he wound up living out of his car for a solid three years. Fortunately, he kept the faith, and he got his big break in 1993 at Showtime at the Apollo, where he eventually became the host. Harvey then landed his very own sitcom, The Steve Harvey Show, a show that ran from 1996 until 2002. Over the years, he stuck to his stand-up roots, joining Cedric the Entertainer, Bernie Mac, and D.L. Hughley on a King's Comedy tour several times in the late 90s. Harvey also tried his hand at radio and launched his own radio show called The Steve Harvey Morning Show, and has dabbled in acting. Today, he credits his success to having the courage to take a risk on himself all those years ago. Number 2. Jewel As a youngster, American singer-songwriter Jewel had it tough. In fact, there's little wonder she can conjure up some of the emotion she does in her songs. She has plenty of life experience to call on. Speaking at a conference in Las Vegas, she told the crowd of financial types how she was homeless as a child, stealing to get by. Jewel said people treated her like she was contagious, a far cry from how they treat her now. She was speaking about the Inspiring Children Foundation, a foundation she is a keen supporter of. The foundation helps at-risk youth, a cause she is very passionate about, and for good reason. In sharing her story, Jewel hoped people would realize just how demeaning it was to be homeless. She mentioned how people would literally back away from her, as if her homelessness might spread to them. She said it made her realize what it must be like to be an animal, because her entire focus was on finding food and shelter. The product of a very difficult home life, Jewel said her dad suffered from PTSD, was an alcoholic, and abusive. Mom left when I was eight. My dad had a lot of trauma from his own childhood. At 19, she was discovered singing in bars and coffee shops. The break resulted in her selling 30 million albums and being nominated for four Grammys. Number 1. Michael Orr a former American professional football player who played 110 games throughout his career grew up tough. He lived in Memphis, Tennessee and was one of 12 children. His father provided little to no support and spent years in and out of prison. His mother was a drug addict and Michael and his siblings were in and out of foster homes and frequently homeless. Because of his upbringing and the fact that he attended 11 different schools during his first nine years as a student, or performed poorly in the classroom. His father was also murdered while he was a senior in high school. Fortunately for Orr, this coincided with the turning point in his life. He was taken in by Sean and Lee Ann Toy, who became his guardians when he was 17. Yeah! With their influence, he began to excel in football quickly becoming a top prospect in the state of Tennessee. This led to multiple scholarship offers, and opportunities began to open up for the small-town boy with a rough upbringing. Soon after finishing college, he was drafted into the National Football League to play for the Ravens and has become a well-known football player. He now lives a life so far removed from his childhood that he can buy anything he has ever dreamed of and more. Congrats, baby! We did it! Congrats! 
You might have followed a celebrity for a good portion of their life, but not really know them at all. What we see can often be a fake exterior and not the full story. Some have achieved fame through sheer luck, others have had to work like hell to reach the top. If you delve a little bit deeper, you might be quite surprised. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!